Hello guys, I'm the Canadian Reviewer doing a new video for you guys and this time we'll take a look at Transformers Human Alliance Bumblebee and it is the Dark of the Moon version See as to why I'm not a big fan of this figure Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? And here's Bumblebee in his Camaro mode Now, not many people might know about this but, I might as well tell you guys something about myself. If you make something into a Camaro, whether it's a Transformer or Hot Wheels, an actual Camaro, I will go mine. Like, I love Camaros, especially this type of Camaro. I love the look of that. I mean, the first time I looked at it, uh, it was on for Bumblebee, so there you go. So, I really love this car. However... I do kind of feel that this figure is a little bit unnecessary, but I guess it's alright. It gets a pass be because it's a Camaro. But I do have something to say. Do you ever go into Walmart or Toys R Us and you're kind of like this? Well, I'm here to tell you, you're not alone. So let's take a look at this in its alt mode. As you can see, it is the black and yellow deco, not the yellow and black deco. Wait, that's... That's pretty much the same. Black and yellow, black and yellow. It's not the mostly black and not as much yellow alt mode, so that's kind of cool. I will say this, one thing that I don't like is the smoky blue tint in the windows. It just doesn't work. I mean, this is supposed to be a stealth bumblebee, and I, I guess the yellow's fine enough, but the blue is just killing it. I'm not expecting it to be like the Batman Begins Batmobile Tumblr thing, but still. Though I guess it does make more sense in Transformers Prime. Which, by the way, if you're going to make a bumblebee, Probably 50% of the chances are it's going to be made in the black and yellow deco. In fact, Age of Extinction already did that. That was the first Bumblebee we ever saw for Age of Extinction. I like the yellow lines in the rims. That's kind of cool. I love the silver Camaro. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. And the red around the Chevy logo. That's also pretty cool. And it's got some nice detail in the back. Although, I, I don't think the Autobot logo counts as a number or a letter. But it's Autobot B, and it's got a nice gold Chevy logo and some nice red paint details, so that's nice. Although, there's not really much more to talk about other than the missiles get stored on the back, or uh, bottom, uh, or uh, on the here. And yes, it does open up, and yes, there is a lot of robot kibble inside. I'm not expecting this to be an alternator, though. And there's Sam Witwicky, we'll take a look at him in a second. However, I do like this more than the previous Bumblebee where everything was pretty much yellow. This one actually has gray seats, so that's kind of cool. And the figure can actually reach the steering wheel because everything on the set is pretty much a repaint. They didn't remold the figure, which I think they kind of should have, but at the same time, hey, he can reach the steering wheel. Out of the car. Look, look at it. It's like Bumblebee's trying to throw him out. It was a bumble. No, 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 no. But it just fits right in. In fact, uh, this arm doesn't really plug in yet. It does feel secure and it actually fits right in. So that's nice. Here's the Sam Witwicky and I've seen worse for figures. I, I think it does uh, the Sam Witwicky character justice. The differences between this and the Revenge of the Fallen figure, look at that, you can barely see the differences. Actually, this one has a darker uh, color tone from the jeans to the shirt to the actual head. Um, I believe there's actually a difference in the deco of these little joints right in here. This one's got a more blue tint, uh, this one's more gray, and the paint seems more finished on the feet for this guy. In the meantime, it just seems more messed up and it just looks very messy and it's also in that darker camo color type 
thing, so that's actually kind of interesting. He doesn't have any wrist articulation, which I think this figure should have had, but otherwise, it's not a bad figure. And here's the box! So anyways, let's go on to the robot mode. Bumblebee just wants to prove that, well, he doesn't have to be small anymore, you know. But uh, I, I think he overdid it with the Battle Ops Bumblebee. I would say leader class Bumblebee. Yeah, I think Human Alliance is, is good enough for you, buddy. So he's a very nice sized little Bumblebee, you know. He, he Well, not little, he's actually quite huge. He's almost like a Voyager class toy, which is not bad because if you actually watch the first Transformers movie, he's taller than Jazz and right around where Ratchet and Ironhide are. So it's to scale with everyone. How does this compare to the old Bumblebee? Well, I actually happen to have that. And I will say the old Bumblebee does it way better. This one might look small to you from the camera, but uh, this one and this one are both the same size, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take off Sam from there. But this is a pretty cool looking Bumblebee uh, as it is. I mean, it, it's not really that horrible. However, I will say this Bumblebee is outstanding. It's got the movie accurate colors, even though the alt mode has a lot of yellow. It's got a lot of these little fine details that are absolutely superb. And just overall, what it comes down to is the face. This face is too shiny, it's too bright, it, it just screams... It, it's almost like the prime Bumblebee, which I will say that it, it was kind of off to me. This one is very nice, it's very flesh with its entirety, and it actually looks like it, it's a part of him, not just a, a mask. I will say this though, even though I'm not a huge fan of the windows, and I like these ones better, this one has the much more brighter light piping than this one. This one actually, because of the color of plastic, actually shows up a little bit more. I would love to switch that light piping and this light piping around. Or maybe I don't. Da, da, da. And what is kind of cool is you can also switch the masks, so if you like the more silver one rather than the kind of the dark gray metallic version of it, you can actually do so. I will also say that the yellow here bugs me a little bit. It's just like, out of the ordinary, there's a lot of metal robotic bits that I just feel could have been gray, especially his feet. Oh my god, that looks horrible. I know it's Bumblebee, and they want to make sure that y you don't think it's someone else, but, I, I mean, I, I still think it's Bumblebee. You can make this completely black with little touches of yellow, and I would still know that's Bumblebee. Of course, this being the Human Alliance version, you can plug in Sam to pretty much anywhere. He has a little plug on his fist, and there's a couple of holes on the back of Sam, as well as on his feet, that attach to those little pegs. So he's got one on his fist, he's also got two in his seat, he's got two in the back, as well as he's got this little gun that flips up. It's got a couple of handles so you can hook the figure onto that. That's kind of cool. As well, for weaponry, he's also got this little piece that comes off the little panel in the back, which is a great use for that panel. I know a lot of Transformers with that panel, and it just makes it absolutely superb. And it's a great way to use it. You can also flip this around, put Sam in the middle here, and rotate these two little cannons... Uh, that are on the top of the arm. Die. I should also mention that he's got two missiles, one on each arm, that fire into, or f uh, from, this gun. Pew! And it's actually quite strong. I think it's actually stronger than the other Bumblebee. Let me just take the missile and plug it onto here. Nope! And I will say this, it doesn't have the yellow bit right here that the previous Bumblebee has, so that's, that's kind of cool. And yes, I'll show it off. Bumblebee does, in fact, have his little battle mask, which is pretty cool. Now, even though it is a very nice touch, and I wish more deluxe Bumblebees had that feature, it kind of has this large gap in the middle, and I, I'm just not a big fan of it. It's not as good as this Bumblebee. It's not as good as this. 
I will also say this, something kinda cool is that Bumblebee has some of the tighter parts. He actually has the more uh, superior, more stable parts than the previous Bumblebee. Um, but he also has parts that are just more loose and just wiggly, like the doors. The doors really bug me on this toy. They're just floppy and just everywhere. However, his chest pieces are very tight and they actually stay in place, which is absolutely amazing. And his knee joints actually work, even though I did kind of broke these ones or break or whatever, you know, grammars. So, yeah, I know a lot of people are going to nitpick at me for that, but whatever. So, with that said, is it really a bad toy? I mean, why don't I like it as much as the previous Bumblebee that came out for Revenge of the Fallen or the Hunt for the Septicons re-release with the white shirt Samlet wiki? Well, it comes down to this. Movie accuracy. I wasn't really into that prime Bumblebee with the gray paint, with, well, with the mostly gray paint, until uh, kind of the stealth Bumblebee was seen on the show. So I didn't even look at that one. But I wanted it because it came on the show. This one did not. So why does the first movie Bumblebee that was in the stealth colors interest me more than this? Well, maybe I'm just done with this mold. I, I, I really think I am. One's enough. I, I don't really need another. It's just very unnecessary. I like having it. I like that it was six bucks. However, I think that not a lot of people are going to get this toy for six bucks. So, you know, a lot of people are going to pay 30 to $50. 30 to 50 is asking for a lot. If you can get it for 20 that's a fair price. Anyways, let's go to my overall review. So overall, do I like Dark of the Moon Bumblebee? I just think it's quite unnecessary, but I got it for six bucks, so... There we go. Uh, but it's still not really a horrible figure. If you missed an opportunity to get the Hunt for the Septicons re-release or the Revenge of the Fallen original, go ahead. I would say go ahead, because it's a good mold for a bumblebee. Anyways, that is all for now. I'm the Canadian Reviewer, and hey, next review is the 100th episode. Something. So, that is pretty much it. I will see you guys next time. I'm the Canadian Reviewer. I'm going to eat some bacon.